So you've decided you want to go ahead and get into hydroponics, but yet you're in a bedroom, you're in an apartment, you're in a small house, where all you've got is a bedroom that you can dedicate to that system. Well today we're going to go ahead and show you in part one of our four part series of how to go ahead and build a vertical tier system of doing some hydroponics that's going to be specifically designed in helping to do some microgreens, getting small leafy greens, that sort of thing that will be perfect for a small scale system. Let's get started. Now as we go ahead and look at getting into our system, yes, it is certain that there are easier ways to go about doing it where you have a wire racking system that you can get from your local big box store and you've got to figure out some way to go ahead and do your sightings. There are different ways you can do this. The method that the method that we're showing today is not set in concrete or stone. It's just we had some 2x4s, we had some plywood, and it's a relatively strong sturdy system that can support hundreds of pounds of weight. So we went ahead and did this system. However, there are many other methods that you can do in setting it up using wire racking that you can buy at your local big box store. So keep that in mind, this is just the system that we chose to do with the materials that we had on hand. It is nothing that says you have to do it this way. There are many different ways that you can modify it. This is just the one that we chose to do. In taking that looking at your hydroponic shelf and how you want to go ahead and do your designs, like we mentioned a little bit earlier, it is fully up to you how you want to design it. Now, we just happen to have some of these materials left over from another project, and so that's what we end up deciding to do. Even though we have a general idea of what we want to do, it's still a good idea to get some blueprints down in your mind, so that way when you go to cut your material, you know exactly the size you're cutting, and you're not going to make any mistakes. So, in following our blueprints, Prince, we went ahead and decided that we wanted to have three growing tiers that are set aside with the actual water flow. Due to the constraints of what our shelves look like, we needed to go ahead and set them at five feet wide, and we wanted to go ahead and have the internal dimensions of the shelf be approximately 22 inches. And so once we accounted for the length of the two by fours, we went ahead and had five foot long shelves and 22 inches wide. So that way when we went ahead and attached them together, the overall width of the shelf would be approximately 25 inches once you accounted for that. So that would allow us to put in a standard 11 inch by 22 inch flat inside. And that's what we were entirely aiming for is making this wide enough so that it could fit one standard flat. So by having all of this already set out and fully what we were looking for, we can go ahead and take all of our measurements and cut it all at once, reducing the amount of time that it's going to take us overall in this build, Then, rather than having to do a little bit, measure, do a little bit, measure. We can have everything already fully measured, cut all at once, and assemble all at once, making the overall project less time consuming. Once we got the lumber for the shelves cut, it was next time to go ahead and cut the lumber for the legs or the side post that's going to hold them up. And the dimensions for those, we decided to go ahead and do 90 inches tall. Now we chose that for two reasons. One, the taller you go on a vertical system, the less productive it becomes, the taller ladders you need, all that. So just for ease of use, it went ahead and did seven and a half feet. Now the second and more important reason why we decided to go seven and a half feet, because we we kind of had a ceiling that we were running into and you don't want to give yourself so restraint of room that you're not going to be able to use that top tier and so by us having approximately eight and a half foot tall ceilings we chose to do that seven and a half feet so there are some reasons why now that we've got this wood all fully cut, we're going to go ahead and start assembling our shelves. You want to go ahead and do this as much as possible outside, but realizing that you've got to fit this in your bedroom or a door, it's not realistic to be able to build the whole shelf outside and then move it inside. It's just going to make it an absolute nightmare. But for what you can assemble outside, I highly suggest you do so. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we are aligning our 2x4s up and we're going to go ahead and drill pilot holes. Even though we are using self-tapping screws, there is still the potential that this wood could easily split. So we're going to try and mitigate that as much as possible. Even though we probably should have used a T, a level, and a few other things to get this absolutely perfect, 
we didn't do this on that project so that's in hindsight if you do have those in hand I highly suggest that you use a square a T or other method to make certain it's as square as possible but they ended up being all right once we get all the boards screwed together and fully attached, we're going to go ahead and run some chain about 6 to 8 inches inside the shelf. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because we need a nice, strong, secure way in attaching the lighting system to the undersides of the shelf, so that way the shelf underneath it can get proper lighting. So that's what the primary reason for these chains are going to be, is so that we can have some form of suspending the wiring and making it easy to do so once the shelf is actually all built together. Once we've all got the chain installed and attached just using heavy duty bolts and a nut and washer to secure it, we went ahead and added the ply board with just some standard box nails, once again preventing as much splitting of the wood as possible. Now that we have our shelves constructed, put together, and our legs pre-drilled and ready to go ahead and start assembling, we're going to go ahead and now bring the materials inside so that way we can go ahead and start our assembly. We're first going to go ahead and start off by drilling where we've got marked out where we want the tiers on and our legs and then going to be drilling those exact same locations in the shelves so that way it's going to make assembly much more easier. Now at this point we're going to go ahead and take our shelf and we're going to go ahead and set them up next to our legs and we're going to go ahead and take bolts and washers and nuts that we already got and we're going to go ahead and pass those through the holes that we've got pre-drilled. Now the reason why we chose to use bolts versus self-tapping screws or some others is because we want to keep the system as modular as possible. So if we ever have to take it down, whether we move an apartment or we decide to move the bedroom because we need that space for something else, we can go ahead and do so. Even though we are in a tight space, we don't want to limit ourselves to having it in just this small space. The nice thing about this is it's small so we can move it around as those things require. So by having these bolts in, we can easily break it down if we need to and we can move forward. As a side note, when you are constructing these projects, if you have a friend or a roommate or something that's willing to help you in constructing it, I highly advise that you get their help in constructing it because as you can see here, a leg falling on your head and giving you a lump on the noggin can hurt quite a bit. So ask for help. It'll save you a lump on the head if some of these things aren't quite sturdy because you don't have all the legs secure yet. Gradually over time, as you get tier upon tier and being able to use these working in this tight space, you can gradually have these shelves rise up above and get things much more secure. As you can tell, these three shelves, yes they are long, but there's actually a fourth shelf that we're building that's on the bottom. And we've chosen that for a couple things. One, we can happen to use that as storage if we like, but in our case, we're gonna go ahead and use it as another growing shelf as well. And so that way, if there are some plants that happen to grow a little bit bigger, we can go ahead and transition them down to that bottom shelf. But we're gonna have to water them manually. We're not gonna be able to use them with the watering system. And that's what this giant space for is with the shelves. When planning, realizing that our bottom tank system that we used to use as our reservoir for the pump going up, we would not be able to water all of the bottom shelves. And for the width of the shelf that we had, we only had a maximum of five feet. And so we had to incorporate our water tank reservoir system underneath the shelves. But I didn't want to lose that space to the left. And so that was how we could best utilize it. This is why having blue clearance is so crucial. If we were to have gotten to this point and not realize what would we do with the water tank system, we would have had to have gone back and redone it, making up for that oops. So having the blueprints and everything planned out for the future is crucial. As a side note, you have may have noticed that the shelves are actually tilted at a slight angle. Now one of the reasons why I chose to do that was so that way I could take advantage of gravity and I can have one pump push the water up to the very top tier. And as it drains, then the gravity is going to take the flow system through the plumbing tier down to tier down to tier and I can best utilize it. And by having it at a slight slant, it's going to better allow the water to drain off a little bit quicker. 
and that way when I do have the, some of the water set up within the plumbing system there's not going to be water pooling in these tiers that way it's going to allow my system if I wanted to set it up this way to have an ebb and flow system where there isn't water drowning the plants and pulling up now when all is said and done these tiers are looking pretty good and we've got the system set up however there is always one thing you want to make certain to do vacuum and clean as you go happy wife happy life I learned that long ago sometimes when you're dealing with the actual construction of a project it is sometimes a little bit hard to keep in mind what the future has potential and what it comes to be so here's a quick view of the future of what the Envision has for the future We'd like to thank you for joining us as we went ahead and showed you part one in our four part series of how to go ahead and build your vertical tier system of hydroponics or your ebb and flow system so that way you can have it on a continuous basis with self watering systems so that way it will greatly reduce the amount of labor you're having so you're not having to go through and hand watering your systems every single day. Thanks for joining us, and if you like what we're doing, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that way you can continue to receive great videos like this all the time and not miss it. Thanks for joining us once again. We look forward to seeing you next time.